invite you to stand and please turn toward the back. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Simon to the Son of David. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We pray, most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our King, and when he comes again, may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts, and follow him, follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look! The world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. Let us go forth in peace in the name of the Lord.
invite you to stand. Uh, 
uh, hymnal racks in front of you a copy of St. Matthew's account of our Lord's Passion. Uh, if you're short and there's empty pews in front of you, you can maybe borrow a copy or two from there, and a few of you may have to share as well. But we'll read through St. Matthew's account, and those parts that are highlighted, I would invite you, the congregation, to join as we read them aloud. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment. And she poured it on his head as he reclined at table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? This could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing for me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he sought an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where would you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful, and began to say to him, one after the other, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judah, Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, you will all fall away because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and said to his disciples, 
sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep, and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man, seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish with the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled, that it must be so? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders had gathered. And Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. <coughs> At last, two came forward and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What further witnesses do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spit in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was standing outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, 
I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you too are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately, the rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate, the governor. Then, when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them a potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave them to the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called a Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governors took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, 
Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charges against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then the two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lem of Sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit.
so they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. I invite you to stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn.
trying to set up a, a contrast, a, a contrast from the events of Palm Sunday and the children and the palms and the singing to then the events later in the week. The service itself is supposed to transport us from, from Hosanna, save us now, to crucify him, crucify him. And in this contrast is hidden, if you will, the ancient Kyrie eleison of the Bible, or Lord, have mercy. Not in so many ways, but hidden there. Lord, blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. The long-promised Savior, the Lord of all creation, of all mankind. Lord, have mercy. Save us. Help us. Crucify him. Save us. Lay down your life for us. So what do you think? Do you think on that Sunday as Jesus rode into Jerusalem, do you think you would have been there with the crowd welcome, welcoming him, crying out Hosanna and giving him honor and praise? Well, I certainly hope so. But would you have added your voice to the voice of the crowd five short days later as they cried out, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! What? Cry out? Crucify Him? We better. We better. Even now, looking back, for without his death on our behalf, we would remain lost. We would remain blind, dead, and enemies of God. Sin, death, and the devil would still be a power. Now, now I'll branch you. We don't like to see Jesus suffer and die. But we have come to know that this is how he atoned for the sin of the world. That's how the Lamb of God, the ultimate scapegoat, took away the sins of the whole world, claiming them for his own, and laying down his life, the wages of sin. It was awful. It was horrific. A bloody mess. And he suffered terribly. But for us, for us, it was necessary. We couldn't, we can't, do anything to secure our release, our deliverance, or our salvation. Only God himself could act to save, and only by the shedding of his blood. Only by him dying, forsaken by his Father there on the cross. And so, yes, we Two, must cry out, and we should cry out with tongues of faith, crucify him, crucify him. Lord, have mercy, deliver us, crucify him. It's a, it's a sobering reality, if we'll pause to think about it. This time of year, especially during Holy Week and on Good Friday, 
I am humbled when I remember it was my sin that put him there. He suffered. He bled because I sinned. Because I so often think I know better than God. Because I so often don't want to listen. Because I would prefer to serve me, myself, and mine. That's why he was nailed to the cross. For it was for me that he died. Yeah, me. Not much to die for, huh? Me, who sometimes runs pretty hot, but other times pretty cool when it comes to my faith and Christian living. Me, who sometimes praises God, and other times is a little resentful for all that he's revealed to us in his word. Me, who betrays him in my own way with all my selfish and sinful thoughts, words, and deeds, and who effectively denies knowing him and being one of his when pressed by others or in uncertain circumstances. But it was for me, for me, who shares in a meal that will cost him his life. For me, who often wants a sign, something more sure than his holy word. For me, who desires by faith to be with him forever in his kingdom, but who needs to hear over and over and over and over again his incredible words of holy absolution, who needs to be reminded that yes, even my sins are forgiven. You know, there's an African-American spiritual that poses a series of questions. Were you there? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Yeah, I was there in a sense. I was certainly in view. My sins were there. He suffered for my sin. And Barabbas represents me. And I was set free as Jesus is led off to die. And knowing me completely better than I even know myself. And knowing you better than you know yourself. And knowing all about you. About your past, your present, and your future. Knowing it all. Jesus the Christ goes to a horrific death. And he lays down his life so that you and I might be reconciled to God. We might be set free from sin, death, and the devil. And so that we might receive the gift of eternal life. Oh, man. Easter is going to be sweet. Can you tell I'm looking forward to it? Amen. We stand.
We stand. the sins of the world, and you invite us to call on you as our Father. Graciously hear the prayers we now offer in your Son's name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, bless us this holy week, and grant us an increase in our devotion to you and to your word. Help us to prayerfully manage our lives this week, to keep your Son and his sacrifice foremost in our minds and bless our worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Holy Spirit, as our Lord Jesus humbled himself by making himself a servant to all, so help us to have the mind of Christ that, they, that we may serve humbly in his name. Give us opportunities to serve and to proclaim Christ with our words and actions, thus bringing glory to his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you do not desire the death of any sinner, but that all would turn in repentance to you. Bless the preaching of your gospel and the administration of your sacraments, both here and in all the far-flung places of the world. Convert those who do not yet know Christ and sustain those who face danger and opposition for his sake. Bless our pastors, missionaries, and chaplains, and make them bold to declare the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you hold in your hand all the might of man. We ask you to give wisdom to all the leaders of this world, that they might govern with integrity and respect the rights of all. Bring to nothing the plans of those who oppose your good and gracious will and bless our nation and the men and women of our military. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your gracious will, O Lord, look in mercy on all those who suffer with illness, trouble, injury, or disability of any kind, and graciously regard those who mourn the passing of loved ones. Bless them with what is best for them. Help them to find peace and comfort in your goodness and mercy. And use us to help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, in your blessed sacrament, you give us your body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins and for the strengthening of our faith. As we prepare to receive these gifts, Keep us mindful of the confession we make by coming to your table, and keep us from impenitence, that all who have received your body and blood may receive it to their good and to the glory of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you would have us ask, grant us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, 
which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you. 